Welcome to Notre Dame. Uh, my name is Father Mike Connors. I'm the director of the Martin Program in Homiletics here at Notre Dame, and it is my great pleasure to welcome all of you here for this, our fifth, preach, our fifth major preaching conference at Notre Dame. Uh, I see many familiar faces. We're glad to see you back. We've got some others who are here for the first time. We want to especially welcome you, uh, and thank you for being with us. Uh, there are about 270 people on our registration list, so I'm very pleased with that. Thank you for your support of what we're trying to do here in the Martin program. I'm going to first introduce Dr. Timothy Matavina, the chair of the theology department. The theology department is our co-sponsor, and Tim is my boss, so please, please welcome us, Tim. Thank you very much. I'm uh, Michael's grateful boss because of the great work he does. So I had my world welcome as well. Uh, the purpose of the church is to preach the gospel. So there's nothing more important to our department, to our university than supporting this work. We're so delighted you're joining in it. In welcoming you, I want to take a few minutes to, to thank Mike and to, do the, to say the things that he will not tell you, which is the great job he's doing in the Martin program, along with Dr. Carla Bellinger, who works with him. The Martin program is, was supported by an endowment from John and Virginia Martin. It's been around since 1983, doing great work with preaching. But in the last 10 years or so, Mike has really taken it to a new level with a number of projects. I'll just mention a few of them. One of them are these conferences. Now, this is the fifth conference Mike has organized and convened. The previous four, he published all of the proceedings. So if you're looking for more of the same or a deepening when you leave here, those books are all available if you want to study up on previous preaching conferences. Uh, some of them have been even larger than this one, but they've all been very successful in terms of bringing people together from many places. During Mike's tenure, he also applied for and got a major grant from the Lilly Endowment for the Martin Preaching Academy which works in dioceses around the country, gathering groups of priests who want to have ongoing formation and discussion among themselves to improve as preacher. Dr. Bellinger came on board through that grant, and that's been one of her principal responsibilities, the Preaching Academy, although she also works on the other aspects of the Martin program. Uh, Mike expanded the Martin Lecture Series, which is more for campus here because it's just a single lecture, but he expanded the number of lectures, doubled the number of lectures annually, and those lectures are wonderful events. I've been to a number of them. Uh, the preacher that comes in or the person that comes in usually preaches and then gives an evening lecture, largely attended by our faculty and our Master of Divinity students. And again, this has been a tremendous uh, experience and learning for our seminarians in preparation, our lay students in preparation, and our faculty and preachers on campus who uh, learn so much from that ongoing series of some of the top preachers, Catholic and Protestant in the country. Uh, Mike, of course, has also been teaching the preaching courses in our MDiv program, again, to lay and seminarian students. And in fact, his latest project, which is just beginning now, is to develop preaching across the curriculum uh, for our MDiv program. Just starting that, now he's been doing that in various ways, but now it's going to be more formally introduced uh, to expand the program and make preaching an even more integral part of the preparation for ministry our students receive. And Mike has also started the visiting faculty member in preaching. We've had some really renowned folks, several of them in the group today, who have been brought in in the fall, taught one of the preaching courses, and had an opportunity to develop their own research and writing on preaching. And that's just a partial listing. It's been a tremendous gift of leadership Mark, Mike has brought to the Martin program. So uh, welcome. You're here for a real feast of learning and celebration and community and fellowship. And I want to thank you for being here, congratulate you for taking the time out of your schedules to be here, to learn to be better preachers. And I'd also like to invite you to join with me to congratulate Dr. Bellinger and Father Connors on the tremendous work they've done in building the Martin program for all of us. Thank you, Tim. I'm going to have to double your fee here for that kind of praise. I have a few uh, announcements as we begin, and then I'd like to make a few comments about the theme around which we are gathered for this, uh, for this conference. Um, we have a few bishops with us today. Bishop Fernand Cherie is 
sitting right there, if you would stand, please. Thank you. Bishop will be our presider and preacher at tomorrow's liturgy. Uh, also, Bishop Sylvester Ryan is here somewhere. Where are you, Bishop? There, there he is, the retired Bishop of Monterey. Glad to have you both with us. We also have a Lutheran bishop with us. Craig Satterley is somewhere in the audience. There he is, one of our presenters here. So we're always glad to have members of the hierarchy with us. Uh, a few just housekeeping announcements. Uh, priests, if you are celebrating at any of the liturgies, uh, please come to the sacristy beforehand vest and please just take your place in the chairs behind the altar. You'll find plenty of chairs there. Please just go ahead and take your place for all of the liturgies. Deacons, if you're vesting, you will find, uh, you should find some reserved pews in the front of the church, I believe. Uh, I'll, we'll check that when we get to the basilica, but that would be the place for you to sit. Uh, we have plenty of albs. We don't have very many deacon stoles, though, so I hope that you remember to bring your diaconal stole with you if you want to vest. I want to introduce a couple of people to, me, to you. Dr. Carla Bellinger, the Associate Director of the Martin Program. And Kristen Garvin Podell, who's sticking through the door way in the back there. Kristen, Kristen is our conference coordinator. Kristen, we are indebted to you for making all of this happen, so thank you so much for all that you've done. Uh, any of the three of us may be able to assist you with anything you need uh, related to the conference. However, if you're staying at Ryan Hall and the residence hall, we probably can't be too helpful with that. So if there's a problem with your room over there, please see a member of the uh, summer hall staff over there, okay? Many of you are staying at the uh, Morris Inn as well. Um, the weather, well, it's been wet, as it's been in many places. Uh, if you were here last night, you saw a deluge of rain. And uh, from here on, the forecast looks improving and also uh, rather warm. By tomorrow afternoon, it should be mid-80s and quite humid, I think. But this is June in northern Indiana, and this is not all that surprising. Um, there are a few meals included in your registration. Breakfast tomorrow and breakfast Wednesday out here in the atrium, a continental breakfast will be served. That's part of the registration. Also, the banquet tomorrow evening is part of your registration. We hope to see uh, all of you here for that. Um, in your program, you will find uh, something, a reference to some lunch table conversations tomorrow. I will be saying more about that tomorrow morning. So just stay tuned for more information on that. There will be uh, a group of uh, tables for uh, deacons if you want to get together and chat, as well as parish priests. So more information on that tomorrow. What else? Meals. You should, in your registration packet, find some information on the venues on campus that are open. Uh, most of the campus venues are open at least part, uh, part of the day, so you can consult that. There's some, also some references to places uh, off campus as well. I want to apologize to some of you who have been a bit inconvenienced by the Senior Open. As you know, we are hosting a major golf tournament here. Uh, the preliminary rounds are already underway today, I believe, and uh, we are expecting something like 30,000 people per day, Thursday through Saturday, for this event. So it'll be like a string of football Saturdays. Um, this has caused some inconveniences uh, because they took up all the hotel rooms, et cetera. I do apologize for any of those inconveniences. And as I mentioned in an earlier email, we did move our conference schedule forward a little bit to accommodate some of that. I would also mention to you that we are, I believe, actually the last event to take place in this building. McKenna Hall is about to be raised and rebuilt bigger and better. Should you see a fleet of bulldozers outside, <laughs> please stand in the way so that they don't tear the building down around us, okay? Am I forgetting anything? Any housekeeping announcements or questions? Okay, I think I've... Uh, some of you have had some difficulties uh, parking. Please hang in there, we'll get that sorted out. And uh, Kristen, what are they, 
need to do? Go back to the to the to the main gate and get it. No, so we're really sorry. This is a new sort of thing on campus, um, and I, on behalf of Tom representing the University of College, I apologize for anyone that can't just run around and been inconvenienced. Um, as I was telling someone checking in, due to the new buildings and such, it now takes me longer to walk from my parking lot to my office than just to get to campus. So um, if you need help finding a parking lot to go to, uh, please come to the registration desk and Eric or myself can help you. Um, I think we've chatted with most people that have this issue, but they are pay locked until 5 p.m. Um, a few of you that are in the same area, I would recommend taking a shuttle or if you see any other hotel in town that has one, that's the easiest way, especially with the parking um, of the U.S. Open. So we'll try to help you on a case-by-case basis, but I'm really sorry for expecting that. Thanks, Kristen. Allow me to make a few comments about our theme. We in the Martin program have been on a journey together with many of you. We've been asking some, I think, fundamental questions over the last few years. Questions like, what would it take to renew Catholic preaching? Nothing like having a small mission, right? What is the point of preaching anyway? What are we trying to do? Why is it that preaching has been regarded in our tradition as important, even essential, an ingredient in Christianity in every age? We continue to ponder these questions. Along with that, we ponder the question, what does it mean to preach in this time and place? Dominated as it seems to be by the ways that the internet, Twitter, Google, the iPhone, and so forth have been in the process of reshaping consciousness, an age which often seems fascinated by technological advances, yet seemingly bereft of wisdom about how to use them. Two Sundays ago, on the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity, a feast which I dare say many of us preachers find challenging to preach about, I was visiting a parish in another city and I heard a a respectable homiletic effort by the young pastor of that parish. At one point, he stopped and posed this question to the congregation. He said, has the gospel gone dead for us? Has the gospel gone dead for us? We contemporary, modern, or postmodern people. It was, I think, a way of acknowledging too briefly, I thought, that we are living in a moment of darkness, division, and discouragement in the church and indeed in all of the churches. Now, not surprisingly, Father Jonathan's answer to that question was no, the gospel is still very much alive and it is about love, the divine love we see in the three-in-one God. But I think it invites us to be quite honest about what we bring to our gathering in these days. The sexual abuse scandals, which we have witnessed and continue to witness, together with some other forms of disappointment in the hierarchy, have been for many of us like a sucker punch, right to the gut. Church attendance, financial giving, vocations, all are headed south, it appears, at this moment. And let's be honest, it's not hard to understand. At the same time, we stand at a moment in the public life of our society that is viciously polarized, characterized as never before by bombast, by outright lying, and by unconcern for the poor. Even earnest Christians don't know where to enlist their efforts amid all the conflict and confusion. Now, no matter what is going on at any one moment, one should always be wary of speaking for the divine, right? Yet as I try to observe and listen to what's going on, there are moments when I think I hear at least this much. We'd better get clear on who we really are and what we really have to offer. And it had better be made of something deeper and sturdier than abstractions 
or institutional allegiances or just another competing vision of the moral life. What is the good news we have for the people of our time? To my beginning preaching students, I stress that there is no one right formulation of the answer to that question, but that each of us has to have an answer, something that we feel convicted about, a personally held conviction of why the gospel matters and what difference it makes in the living of life. At our conference two years ago, we, we reflected together on what effectiveness means in Catholic preaching. We pondered what I believe to be one of the key questions in preaching, how do we lead our people into an encounter with the living God? For the authentic encounter with a God who acts and speaks, accompanies and heals, transforms and guides is at the heart of what the church, its liturgies, and its service are all about. This year's conference seeks to carry that reflection deeper. To be a preacher is to be a shepherd and a spiritual leader. And this means the preacher must know the way forward himself or herself. We are called to walk the mystical path, the disciples' road. We serve the people of God by helping others find the way of authentic spiritual experience and by helping them to see and touch the divine through our liturgical celebrations. It seems to me that the mystical foundation of Christian life has too often been ignored or marginalized. As the late Father Karl Rahner, S.J., remarked, the Christian of the future will be a mystic or he will not be at all. I recall, too, that Rahner himself was once dismissed as, quote, merely a mystagogue. If you ask me, Rahner was at his prophetic theological best when he was in mystical and mystagogical mode. And we are at our pastoral best when we preach and guide as mystics and mystagogues. I recently read a new book that I want to recommend to you if you have not already seen it. The book is by Father Scott Dedish, a priest of the Diocese of Erie, from hero to servant to mystic navigating the deeper waters of priestly spirituality from liturgical press uh, released in March of this year. Dedish traces his own journey as a priest in which the mystical dimension of his ministry has come more and more to the fore. If Dedish's work had come to my attention sooner, I would certainly have loved to have had him with us. In fact, I still tried to get him, but he had a conflict. I suspect that many of us who have been in this business for some years will recognize something of our own journey in what he has to share and find some encouragement and direction there. Although we face challenges that are in some ways new, we can also look to our roots in the Christian spiritual tradition as a source for deepening our preaching. Here are some of the questions that I hope we will engage together in these days? How is preaching embedded in the church's pastoral mission? What does it mean to be a shepherd and a spiritual leader for others, especially in these dark times? How can a preacher flourish in the role of spiritual leader? How can we lead others into a deeper spirituality, a spirituality of committed discipleship through preaching? So to be a shepherd and a spiritual leader, the preacher must in some sense be a mystic, one who is filled with the gracious presence of the Lord, a presence to be shared with others. And because we are a sacramental people, the preacher must also be a mystagogue, one who can both lead the community's ritual celebrations and help the people of God to plunge into them with lively faith, to touch the holy realities behind them. Mystic and mystagogue, preaching as spiritual leadership. Our call as preachers is an awesome and holy one. May Christ, the good shepherd, lead us and guide us to be good shepherds to his flock. Thank you again for being here. 
two more quick things before we break for our workshops. While I have your attention, I want to announce that we will be holding another major conference in 2021, uh, tentatively entitled Living in the Light of the Word, Enlivening the Scriptural Imagination. This conference will focus more on our use and of scripture and inspiration from scripture. So please, um, it's only two, two years away, please put those dates on your schedule and plan to join us. Now lastly, let's pray, shall we? Let's take a moment of quiet and invite the Holy Spirit's guidance with us during these days, and then we'll pray this prayer to the Good Shepherd together. Please pray with me. Lord of the 23rd Psalm, I have known death, and you have refreshed my soul. I have known fear, and you have comforted me. I have known hunger, and you have set a feast before me. In the darkest valley, no calamity of humankind or nature has separated us. Teach me to walk as you walk, beside those in mourning, so that they will know joy. Beside those in fear, that they will know comfort. Beside those in hunger, that they will feast until their cup overflows. As your goodness and love follow me, may mine follow my neighbor, that the threat of the worst terrors may turn to the knowledge of the comforts of the house of the Lord, where you have invited us to dwell forever. And so let me strive to help build on earth what you have promised us in heaven. In the face of all calamity, present and yet to come, let me lead my neighbor beside quiet waters, the quiet waters of the Good Shepherd. Amen. Do enjoy these days, and please go now to the workshops, which will be beginning at 3.30 or shortly thereafter. Thank you.